So I believe money is important and I believe everybody can be motivated by whatever it is that they are motivated by. For us at Live It, it's not the number one objective. So there would be two things that are, I guess, are equally important in a way, impact or purpose and, and money. But I guess if we were hard pressed and we had to choose between, for example, paying our team really, really bad salaries so we could make more money, mm. but then their lives would be miserable, we'd choose to make less money and pay them more. This is the Ideas Lab podcast, where you can learn from great creative and entrepreneurial minds how to turn your ideas into original businesses, books, and brands. Because in a crowded world, it pays to stand out. This is your host, John Williams, best-selling author and founder of the Ideas Lab London. If you're interested in living and working abroad and in the future of work itself, or perhaps you've heard of the Estonian e-residency, then this podcast will be very interesting for you. Lavinia Yusub is managing partner at Live It International here in Bali, where this podcast was recorded. But she grew up in Romania and in between worked, studied and lived in eight countries and four continents and has visited 35 more. Recently, she has signed up for the Estonian e-residency, but allows her to create a mobile business from anywhere in the world through the Estonian government. So listen to our interview here in Ubud in Bali to find out all about that. Hi, Lavinia. Thank you very much for making the time to be here. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and we've just spent a few moments trying to reposition everything because as typical in Bali, there's a lot of noise going on. Somebody's building a wall at the other end of this building here. Somebody else is doing gardening. So this is kind of fairly standard, hectic, slightly crazy Bali soundscape as usual. Hopefully it's okay. So I really want to talk to you for a couple of reasons there were many reasons. Um, you, how do you describe your role at Livit? You basically run Livit, don't you? And tell me about what that is, and we'll start there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also talk about the fascinating Estonia e-residency. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm the managing partner at Livit. Mm -hmm. uh, we are two partners, Michael Bodeker, who founded Livit, and then me, who's um, running it now. Um, and we are a support system for entrepreneurs and startup teams. So we basically enable them to grow scalable businesses that mm. can impact the world in a smaller or a bigger way. Cool. And so we do that through a few different um, types of services, I guess. Um, I can go into them now if you want. Or Yeah. So, yeah, tell us how that works. What, mm -hmm. what does that involve? Yeah. So we've got, um, we've got a few different brands to say so or s different services going on um we've got a physical um innovation hub in bali which provides um shared offices and co-working space as well um as we know bali is quite a big hub for digital nomads and yeah. entrepreneurs um and we are a space specifically good for teams because we, we 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 basically provide this like super productive space where you can get a lot of work done um, and we do business support services where we help them specifically with a lot of team related stuff. Yeah. Um, we're basically a, a, a perfect partner for people who want to build a product or a service mm. and don't want to worry about what kind of contracts and setups should they have the team on, how to set mm. up systems to enable scale and growing, um, who to recruit, how to recruit, how to put in place um, different tools and ways of communicating for the team and so on. Um, and then we also have another brand called Project Getaway, which we were just mm. talking about. It's uh, basically we enable uh, getaway experiences, yes. workations, so curated workations, which means we put a lot of thought into creating this work plus vacation plus inspiration type of experience, both for entrepreneurs and teams. And we also do um, consultancy on how to do all of these things that we do yeah. because we want to teach people how to, how to do it themselves. Yeah. And I was fascinated because it, when we were talking earlier, you were saying it, it's, it's a business, but it's not just about the money. It's, um, in actual fact, money possibly is not even the number one cause. What are you trying to do at Livid if it's not about, you know, everybody getting rich? <laughs> right. Um, 
so to, to, first to, to clarify, I believe in money being sure. an indicator for um, doing well, for having yeah. a good business. So I believe that even if you're a social enterprise, as mm. these things are called, or an NGO and so on, you should probably look at business metrics, typical business metrics, mm. because they show you, they point you to the things you're doing right. Like yeah. they show you that you have, as we would call it in the startup world, the product to market fit, right? right? That you have a viable product that people are willing to pay for. Mm. Um, so, so I believe money is important. Um, and I believe everybody can be motivated by uh, w whatever it is that they are motivated by. Uh, for us at Live It, it's not the number one um, objective. So there would be two things that are, I guess, are equally um, important in a way, um, impact or purpose and, mm -hmm. and money. Uh, but I guess if we were hard pressed and we had to choose between, for example, paying our team really, really bad salaries so we could make more money, mm -hmm. but then their lives would be miserable. Uh, we choose to make less money and pay them more, which is in fact what we actually do. Yeah, right. And so you're here now in Sanur in Bali, it's in the southeast of, of Bali, right? And, uh, and you've got this lovely space for you actually laid out and designed and it's, you know, managed the entire building of the thing with this lovely rooftop. So I gave a talk there uh, last week or whenever it was. And um, uh, but, you, but you were born in Romania originally. So how did you wash up in Bali. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, there's actually a long story behind that. Um, Bali would be... So I've lived on four different continents in eight mm. different countries for the last 10 to 15 years. Yeah. Um, so I have a passion for learning how things are done and mm. um, making things happen in different parts of the world. Um, I yeah, it, there's a specific type of challenge with that, and I think yeah. it's um, it's it's a bit addictive, right? <laughs> um, but but yeah, so how did I end up in Bali? It's actually a, a funny story. I was in Azerbaijan, which is a country not a lot of people know about, yeah. <laughs> unless you're Eurovision fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I had expanded there a company that was doing events and consultancy. And it was time for me to go. Um, it had been about four years and um, I was really interested in living in Southeast Asia. Um, and at the time, uh, Michael, uh, who is my current business partner, was looking for um, somebody to help him with Project mm. Getaway. So. Right. And I think you said originally you were going to stay for a year. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thought. <laughs> How long has it been now? Five. <laughs> right. Not going back anytime soon. Or, well, but I don't know if there is a back. But um, I mean, I go back very often. Yeah. I spend about two to three months a year in Europe. Oh, I've right, got yeah. um, family in the UK as yeah. well. That's where we normally mm. meet. And uh, back in Romania as well. So I, I love Europe. I will never be anything but a Europe, Euro enthusiast, mm. I think. I love spending time there, but I also love my life here. So I don't yeah. see them as a contradiction. And some people don't know, I was fascinated to find out that um, Romania is quite a tech hub now. And um, why is, how has that come about and, and why is that? Um, I think there are a few different factors there. One of them is that tech and engineering education has been quite a tradition in, yeah. in Romania. And it's traditionally quite theoretical. So people are motivated and incentivized to find their way to apply that knowledge and yeah. find their way around. So that creates a certain type of resource yeah, resourcefulness. Right. Um, there have also been a lot of uh, like tax incentives to say so. So for, for yeah. a long time, um, if you were employing people in IT, you were not paying a tax for that salary. Oh, wow. Uh, which has, I, I think, incentivized many companies to mm. set up shop in, in Romania. So you've got... a uh, a, a quite big amount of talent that speaks a bunch of different languages mm. usually um, and was quite uh, competitive price-wise uh, yeah. at the time. Um, and then you've got tax incentives. So, mm. you know, you, you've got a pretty good situation. Yeah. Um, I think what's happening now, a lot of these companies were setting out like outsourcing or support mm -hmm. or um this sort of like development um, sort of um, 
uh, branches in, yeah. in Romania. And I think now there's a movement towards startups, like those people who are now experienced mm. working at an international level and so on are starting to, to more and more go into the world of startups. Yeah. Okay, so I know both you and I have a passion for the future of work and where it's going. Um, and this has led you to investigate this e-residency in Estonia, or in fact to sign up for it. Why is this? What do you, what do you see happening out there? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so t- it's very exciting, actually. What I see is that the current world of work and business mm-hmm. and the way we run teams, the way we set up businesses, the way we work um, ourselves is very much based on an industrial era yeah. um, system, right? Which was like, yeah, eight hours work um, per day, five people reporting to one manager who reports to another manager and so on and so forth. All of that is based on work in a factory, technically, yeah. right? And work in the next five years or even now or in the next 10 years and even more so in the further future is not going to look anything like it, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so what's happening right now is we see a, a, a shift from work as a as a place yeah. as a physical place to work as a uh, experience or activity mm. right so that means we see the um the rise of co-working spaces of digital nomads people mm. who, who can work from anywhere just have a laptop and an mm. internet connection you're one of them now yeah. right um we see um this idea of location independence mm-hmm. and remote work which means you can work from anywhere yeah. What does that mean for entrepreneurs, right? Because it's simple. When you're employed by somebody and you're able to do your job from mm. somewhere, anywhere in the world, um, that's easy. But what does it mean when you have to run a company? Mm. Um, and what that means is that you're still stuck filling in paperwork, mm. queuing at the bank, at the tax mm. office, in some cases, in some countries, um, needing to apply for licenses, seeing different... I don't know, representatives of different government offices and so on and so forth. And what I've discovered without having any affiliation with Estonia myself mm. or with, with the system is that they are the only country in the world that is trying to wrap their minds around that, yeah. around all of these things. And instead of stopping them or fighting them, as other countries are doing, um, is trying to sort of experiment with it and facilitate it and offer... Um, opportunities for people who are transitioning to the future already. Mm. So what that means is they're they're the first country in the world offering an e-residency program, Mm. which basically allows entrepreneurs to run an EU-based company entirely online. So you basically are able to register a company in less than a day and then never need to show up for anything. So never actually visit Estonia if you don't want to. Uh, which I think is pretty amazing. Yeah. The first step to that is to become an e-resident, so become part of this process mm-hmm. so that you're registered and you're recognized as one and then you can open a company or do whatever it is that you need to do, um, pay taxes, yeah. operate, I don't know, different things. Um, so but Just to be clear, since we're about to go through Brexit, probably, in the UK... A lot of people in Britain will be going, oh, wait a minute, does this mean I can remain an EU resident? But it's not, and sadly... It's It's not a travel document. Yeah. It's not a citizenship and it's not a travel document. Mm -hmm. So what it is, it's access to a digital system. So once again, it's got nothing to do with physical presence. It's got Mm -hmm. everything to do with location independence. So it doesn't mean that you go to Estonia and open a company. It's actually the opposite. Mm-hmm. You stay wherever you are and go wherever you want to yeah. go and still are able to run a company. So um, so I've recently gone through the process of becoming an e-resident, mm-hmm. which means that, um, yeah, you get registered with them. You get, um, like, they, the, the police in Estonia does background checks on you and everything. Mm-hmm. And then you get your fingerprints taken. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get this... Um, digital ID card and token Mm. that you then can connect to your computer and from there... Who does your fingerprints then? um, You go to an Estonian embassy or consulate. Oh, right, okay. So that's the only time you actually have to show up in person. Yeah. And then you ended up with this e-card thing. Yeah, so it's an ID, Mm -hmm. digital ID card that you then connect to a um, like token, to a sort of Mm -hmm. device, USB device, 
Um, and then from there you access everything. Oh, so you plug that into your computer. Yeah. And then you can, so if you want to set up a company that's basically, so that, that company is, is that taxed under European law in Estonia or? So the company, um, generally the, the, the tax laws, I'm not an expert mm -hmm. in tax. So everything I say needs to be sure. taken with a pinch of salt because it's just a, um, a result of my own research yeah. for myself. But generally what, what happens is that if the majority of the work and the leadership of a company is based in one country, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where the company is um, registered or yeah. operating from, you need to pay tax in that country. Mm -hmm. So um, now, if you are three founders, let's say, living in different places in the world, uh, that becomes a bit murky because nobody mm -hmm. knows where you should pay tax. You should pay tax wherever you're a tax resident mm -hmm. of. But um, at the same time, you would be uh, subject to, to Estonian tax, which has a lot of um, opportunities for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. For example, they tax um, their tax is zero for dividends that are not distributed. Oh, okay. So basically, if you made mm -hmm. money and it stays in the company, you, you're not paying uh, okay, tax yeah. on that, yeah. which is which is great. Yeah. But I do think that very different countries have very different perspectives mm -hmm. on tax, and both again, personal tax and corporate tax are two mm -hmm. topics that should be studied differently, right? Like separately. Um, and uh, different countries have very different ways of, of re viewing that and everybody should be doing their own, their own research in that yeah. regard. So what was your interest in getting any residency? Multiple interests. Um, so uh, first of all, I'm running a uh, company in Indonesia, which mm -hmm. is very heavy on paperwork and mm -hmm. on requirements and processes and so on specifically for foreigners mm. um i think it's a great country to, to to live in it's a great country for finding certain types of talent and um it's got huge market opportunities um but at the same time in terms of operating a company it's still quite quite heavy and quite quite difficult so there are certain parts of our business that i would love to move to an easier mm. or initiates on an easier, easier setup. Um, I'm also quite interested in having um, employees in the EU mm -hmm. um, and collaborators and so on. Um, and once again, if I do that from the Indonesian entity, I would pay a huge amount of tax that never gets to those people or to their countries. Right. So once again, if I set up something in the, in the EU, things mm. would change. Um, and then, honestly, just this idea of location independence mm. and being able to run things on the go and never queuing up to, I don't know, submit, I don't know what report and <laughs> so on is really quite attractive. And as we know, yeah. I'm a future work enthusiast, so I had to. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I find it fascinating. It looks quite high tech, this thing, when you've got it plugged into your, your PC from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. So um, what have you got coming up and what's, what's happening in Livet and what are you excited about for yourself at the moment? Um, what we have coming up um, at Livet, um, we are, um, we're growing, we're uh, trying to increase our impact in a way that serves both our clients um, and uh, society in Indonesia. We're trying to do some, some good things here as well. Yeah. Um, we're trying to be very conscious employers as well, and, uh, and we've got a wonderful team that I think is proving that's um, uh, working well for mm -hmm. us. Um, we've got a few things going on with Project Getaway right now. So we've got a um, getaway for entrepreneurs, an acceleration retreat, if you want to call mm. it, for entrepreneurs coming up in March. Okay. So, uh, and how does that, now I know what this is, but how would you describe it to somebody else? Mm-hmm. It's um I would say it's a combination between a a mastermind, a retreat, mm. a working vacation, and a conference all in one. Yeah. For founders, um, so basically what we do is we've got three weeks where we curate an experience. Um, we put together a group of people from 
um, several applications from around the world that we receive. We usually get applications from 20 plus countries for, mm. for one, for one um, take. Um, and uh, so we basically pick the people that we feel are the best suited to help each other and help their businesses and their lives mm. go to the next level. Uh, we believe that it, no matter how great the speakers and the workshops that we might put together are, the secret sauce is in this interaction. Like we see people finding their business partners and mm. going big with, with, with that, with those businesses. We see people getting new ideas, a project getaway. We see people expanding to new markets after that we see their lives being changed uh, in a smaller or a bigger way. And you've had some people create huge businesses as a result of, what is it, three weeks? Um, it used to be a month, mm. uh, and then we've uh, experimented with two weeks as well, and then mm. we decided three weeks is the best, so we do three weeks now. Mm. And everybody stays in a really nice place. They get access to live it, presumably for co-working. You take them out on all sorts of trips. Uh, I remember the night I got there because I stayed a few days when I was speaking a few years ago. Um, you said, "Oh, we're going up the volcano tonight," and uh, you, 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 we, we start at midnight and we walk up there, and then you come down at dawn or something. And then what's his name? Was his James, who's the the streaming audio streaming video guy? Yeah. He said, "Yeah, we're going to yeah. we're going to mountain bike down." And I went, like, oh, yeah, of course. And then go to the hot springs to chill off. <laughs> That's right. And he says, do you want to come? And I go, do I want to walk up a mountain at midnight um, and then mountain bike down with no sleep? I think I'm not going to do that, actually. I'd only just arrived in Bali. And I, while I like the idea of mountain bike, I love the idea of walking up the mountain. I thought doing that when I've still got jet lag and going without a night's sleep is too wild. And we also took us to... Um, Nusa Lembongan, which is a beautiful island off Bali. So if you ever need a holiday from your holiday, sort of, then Nusa Lembongan is, is quite close. And it's, it really does look like a, a desert island. It That's does. Great. It's beautiful. Sometimes, you know, on islands, you get the island fever. So you hop on a different island. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bali is exciting enough probably to keep most people entertained. But it's good sometimes. Okay, well, thanks, Lavinia. We actually managed to record without too much banging and drilling <laughs> interrupting us towards the end there so hopefully that will be listening to people Thanks thank you much. thank you Cheers. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Ideas Lab podcast. Please do subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this episode, it would be great if you could leave us a review. You can get links and details of everything mentioned in the podcast in the show notes, along with photos and video clips from many of our episodes. Just go to theideaslab.org forward slash podcast. <laughs>